Okay, welcome back. Um, so now we're into the second part of this first set of chemistry. And remember, we're talking about water, why is it so important? Uh, why does it have unusual properties? We just touched on that last time. And we'll start getting into how those properties relate to biology in a little bit. So let's just kind of recap really quickly where we finished off last time. Last time I talked about how uh, water has this unusual property of being polar because oxygen is a highly electronegative atom. So remember, oxygen has got a high attractivity for electrons, and so it pulls the electrons away from the hydrogen in this covalent bond, and those electrons are negatively charged, and so the oxygen ends up being slightly negatively charged, and the hydrogen atom slightly positively charged. So that's uh, what this ends up giving us is a molecule which is slightly negative here, slightly positive here, and that means water is polar. It's got a region of negative charge and a region of uh, positive charge, and those charges are um, partial charges, not complete charges. So what is the consequence of that? The consequence of that is that polarity leads to hydrogen bonding. And so hydrogen bonding along with covalent bonding are going to be uh, the two most important uh, principles that you've got to get um, kind of ingrained uh, before we can move on into some organic chemistry because um, they underlie really uh, the basis of the structure and function of organic molecules which are used to construct cells. So you've got to get this down so you can understand the more complex stuff that we're going to get into next week. Um, okay, so let's start with what is a hydrogen bond. A hydrogen bond is a weak electrostatic attraction between a slightly negatively charged atom such as an oxygen in a water molecule and a slightly positively charged atom such as a hydrogen atom in a water molecule and so as what you're seeing here um, are uh, some water molecules there's five water molecules and there's what's being marked on here are the hydrogens the oxygens and then the regions of electronegativity so remember the oxygen is slightly negatively charged and the hydrogens are slightly positively charged so if you mixed up a bunch of water molecules like this comes at your tap if you if you've got a mixture of water molecules uh, in liquid water is what's happening there is you're actually getting a network of water molecules associated with one another and so the slightly negative oxygen is going to attract to the slightly positive hydrogen and you know this opposites attract um, uh, the negative pole of a magnet attracts the positive pole of a magnet for example um, negative charges attract positive charges and that's exactly what's going on here the slight negative charge on the oxygen of one water molecule is attracting to the slight positive charge on another water molecule and that attraction is a hydrogen bond. So hydrogen bonding can occur between different molecules like you see here with these water molecules, um, but it can also uh, work to hold different parts of the same molecule together. So when we talk about protein structure, we'll talk about how different parts of um, uh, a chain of amino acids can be folded up using hydrogen bonding. Hydrogen bonds are going to be super important in looking at the structure of DNA when the two strands of a double helix are held together and then wound around one another, they're held together by hydrogen bonding. Um, so let's kind of go back to the, to, the, to the hydrogen bonding here. So in liquid water, these bonds are always breaking and forming, breaking and forming. They've got an incredibly short half-life. They are very, very unstable. They are very weak. So any slight changes in the energy in the water leads to the bonds breaking. And so in liquid water, water is liquid because of the constant breaking and forming of these, of these, of these hydrogen bonds. Now, if you take solid water, which we call ice, um, is what's happened is all of those bonds have become stabilized. So why do they stabilize? So they become stabilized in, 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 in ice because um, we've lowered the temperature and so there's less molecular motion in the water because the temperature's gone down because we've removed heat. The heat has come out when these hydrogen bonds all start to form. And so as we lower the kinetic energy of the molecules in water and we start to see ice forming, um, the molecules they're moving around less lower kinetic energy because there's less heat so the temperatures drops and so that means the bonds become more stable until ultimately at zero degrees celsius each water molecule forms four hydrogen bonds with its neighbors and then you get a crystalline lattice and then as you put energy back into the water and you heat it up uh, the molecules start to move and vibrate more and those bonds break they become less stable um, and and we see a transition back to to liquid water and now if we keep adding heat in keep kind of cranking the temperature up is what we see is less stability in the hydrogen bonds until those bonds are so unstable that the water molecules are not making them at all and then they can start to leave the surface 
of water and we get transition into the gaseous state into gases which is what we see in water vapor um, so that's kind of quick introduction to hydrogen bonding we're going to come back uh, to talk about that a lot later okay hydrogen bonding i can't emphasize how important it is that you understand what hydrogen bonds are how they form and that you're able to explain it from the most basic of principles of electronegativity so we're gonna have a practice writing assignment in canvas that's going to give you the opportunity to um, to look at um, to, to explore uh, how hydrogen bonds form and you're going to want to start with the most basic principle which is electronegativity in oxygen and hydrogen the differences in the electronegativities of those atoms and then build that up to talking about how you get a polar water molecule and then how opposite partial charges attract and so you're going to build up from the basic principles to this more complex principle of, of hydrogen bonding and hydrogen bonding is responsible for all of the properties that we see in water and many of the properties of, of, of other molecules as well so um, so what I want you to, don't want you to do is kind of try and memorize the properties of lots and lots and lots of different molecules because you've only got so much space in your brain you'll fill it up with too much of that useless stuff so is what we can do is we can we can learn some basic facts some basic principles and then we can keep using them over and over and over again uh, and then we don't have to keep memorizing everything so here's something I do want you to memorize I do want you to memorize the relative electronegativities of four atoms and those atoms are oxygen nitrogen carbon and hydrogen like you see here so I've color coded these um, so you start getting used to seeing these colors in atoms, you understand what, what, what they mean. Oxygen is usually given uh, uh, the color red. So if you see an atom and it's got a, uh, if you see a molecule and it's got a red atom, that's usually oxygen. Nitrogen is usually blue. Carbon is usually black. Hydrogen is white. I can't do white on a white background slide, so I've given it a color of gray here um, and hope that you can understand that hydrogen, if you see it in a molecule, is usually given a, a white color. Okay, so oxygen is much, 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 much more electronegative than nitrogen. What does that mean? It means that if you put an oxygen and a nitrogen together uh, in an atom and you connect them via a covalent bond, the oxygen is going to pull the electrons away from nitrogen in the covalent bond. So the oxygen will again become slightly negatively charged and the nitrogen will become slightly positively charged. So oxygen here, I've made it big and bold and that means oxygen is more electronegative than nitrogen. Now nitrogen, is much more electronegative than carbon um, and much more electronegative than hydrogen so I put nitrogen in blue and made it kind of intermediate in size between the oxygen and the carbon because it's not as electronegative as oxygen but it's more electronegative than carbon so the relative sizes indicate the relative electronegativities this means if you put nitrogen and carbon together form a covalent bond the nitrogen will pull the electrons slightly away from the carbon and the nitrogen will become um, slightly negatively charged there. Now, when you look at carbon and hydrogen, their electronegativities are slightly different, but for our purposes, for introductory biology, we're going to say they are the same. They're not the same. Don't go telling your chemistry professors that because it's not true. But for us, we're going to say they're about the same uh, and treat them as equivalent. So what we have is oxygen, much, much more electronegative than nitrogen. Nitrogen, much more electronegative than carbon carbon and hydrogen about the same so if you memorize that whenever we start linking these atoms together to form molecules you can start working out whether the bonds between the atoms in the molecule are polar covalent bonds or non-polar covalent bonds and that tells you something about the properties of the molecule how it's going to behave in solution when you put it in water and most cells are watery how it's inter going to interact with 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 other types of, of solvent so things which are hydrophobic um, so like oily things um, memorize that and it's going to serve you well later let me give you an example so let's take a look at this um, this is a molecule of ammonia so this in the middle here this blue atom if you remember from the previous slide blue is nitrogen so here is a blue atom and that's nitrogen and then there are three hydrogen ions remember hydrogen is usually shown in white this is a ball and stick model so these sticks represent covalent bonds and the balls represent atoms so three hydrogens attached to this this nitrogen and, and the structure is forming kind of like like a little tripod I guess it's triangular and water is bent and this is triangular so is what we've got is nitrogen now if you remember nitrogen is more electronegative than hydrogen so which way are the electrons being pulled they're being pulled towards the nitrogen or towards 
the hydrogens. So you have to kind of work out which way the electrons are getting pulled here. And so what's happening is that the hydrogens are going to have the electrons pulled away from them towards the nitrogen. The nitrogen becomes slightly negatively charged. The hydrogens become slightly positive charged. So these three legs, if you like, end up with a slight positive charge. The nitrogen becomes slightly negative charged. Is what you have is the conclusion that ammonia is a polar molecule. You could do this with methane. Go to Google, take a look at a diagram of methane, and that's kind of like got four legs with a carbon and four hydrogens. Take a look at that and see if you can work out whether that would be um, uh, polar or nonpolar. Um, so let's kind of let's try and apply that to, um, to 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 a question here. Which of the following here are polar or nonpolar? So take a look at this. Pause the video if you need to. Um, so what I don't want you to do is go and Google this and see if you can just Google the answer because that doesn't help anybody. Um, so pause the video, see how you get on with this one. Okay, so let's think about these these um, these three different molecules we've got here. Um, so hydrogen, hydrogen gas, we've got uh, two hydrogen atoms covalently linked together. Now the two hydrogens have the same electronegativity, they're the same, they're the same atom, they're electropositive when you compare them to something like oxygen. But they're, 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 they're going to pull the electrons back and forth because they've got the same kind of attractivity for electrons. So that means the electrons are going to be no closer to one hydrogen than the other on, on average. So that means hydrogen is completely nonpolar. If it's not polar, it's going to be nonpolar. Oxygen, same thing, equal electronegativity. So that means that um, we're looking at two equal electronegativities pulling on the electrons in the covalent bond um, and so is what we end up with is again a nonpolar molecule because the electrons are being pulled equally there's no charge distribution. Uh, NO2 um, now so what you do is I want you to go and look up NO2 and look at the structure of it and, and try and work out whether NO2 is, um, is polar or nonpolar and once you've worked that out um, if you're comfortable with your answer that's great um, if not maybe put up a discussion in Canvas and see what other people think. So we're going to end there um, and I will uh, speak to you again soon.